Patrick Nicolet from Cap Gemini, you're involved in artificial intelligence. And I just wonder, where are we at with AI at the moment and where will we be? The, the thing is that uh, we start to have a, a, a clearer roadmap. So as you know, at the heart of uh, artificial intelligence, you have algorithms. So now there is a series of algorithms that are available and that you can combine. And then you, you see the different applications. And the first application that is where we are the most advanced is everything around uh, speech and uh, language uh, recognition. Uh, so you, we have on every phone uh, the virtual assistant that you know, and you see this development. And uh, w here, that's where there are the most investment and where we'll see the most progress. Uh, uh, Outlook says that in five years, it will uh, artificial intelligence will have reached or even exceeded the, the human capacity. And can there be uh, instantaneous translation between different languages? There will be. Yeah, yeah. And the second is uh, about the sight. It's everything that is about uh, visual uh, recognition, about watching, about monitoring, uh, and uh, but this we expect that it will take. Uh, more in the range of uh, seven, ten years until we reach something that is uh, superior to the human capabilities. But uh, I mean, what would this, the, the, the use of sight mean? Is this, is this augmented reality or virtual reality? Or I... So you have all these elements about augmenting and virtual reality. Yes, of course. You have also all the elements of, around security. Uh, think of a facial recognition and as a, as a next step. Today we have a fingerprint, tomorrow the, the visual recognition will be much better. But then in a, the industrial aspect, you have everything about the inspection that you can do. You do the inspection, then you can trigger self-healing and, and uh, uh, all the activities that today you will do from time to time uh, given on a certain cadence. I mean, some people fear that this will all have an impact on labor, you know, there'll be, there'll be robots, there'll be machines doing things for us, and we will have no jobs, therefore, you know. I mean, is this a real problem? First, we, we and I have an absolute conviction, uh, a robot, uh, whatever capabilities, remains a machine, and a machine is, the, is here to do certain tasks. And I, I have the firm conviction that human beings are more than this. Right. So, so <laughs> happily, <laughs> happily. So, so the the human being, it's it think it as a a new tools. You have a new set of tools. So there is a lot of requirements on how you will be able to use and leverage these new tools available. But they remain tools. So yes, practically, depending on the type of task that you do for a living, there will be a replacement by the technology. But as, again, as a human being, you're more than what you do. So then there is a challenge that goes beyond the individual accountability. It's really and possibly beyond what the enterprise should do. It's a society question. Well, let me just then ask a final question of what society should do. Um, is there an ethical problem that comes with, or ethical concerns, questions that come with artificial intelligence? There is, definitely. Uh, as we've seen in biotechnology, we, we are engaging in, in uh, certain areas, notably when you look in machine learning and what the, the machine can do to teach to themselves, then there is a relationship to uh, decision making. There are a lot of debate around the connected car, for instance, around the decision making. And, and then when you think of the interconnected objects and, and what will happen and say, how do you fly drones in a certain area for what purpose, military or non-military, etc. And what are the consequences on, on, uh, of all this system? It's not one technology that creates the ethical problem, my view. It's the connection of all these development. Similarly, in biotechnology, you have a genetically modified uh, gene in, in, in one uh, protected garden, there is, it's not an issue. Now you spread it across uh, uh, your country and, and then you don't know. And here it's the same. You should, you, it's, an, it's a way of looking at it, how all these connections ultimately will, will uh, impact this change and how much, in my view, us as human beings, us as society can cope with 
because we'll have to adjust. And that's the purpose of an ethical debate. Petri Nicolet, it's a very intriguing and interesting point to end on. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, my pleasure.